Let's talk about a fairly broad subject, improvising, because I know that each song tends to ask a different approach. Sometimes you have a given melody, whether you wrote it or it's a, a well-known tune, and most likely you're going to stick fairly close to the melody and then improvise based on that melody. Sometimes you might have a song where it's all chord-based and then you start to construct something from chords. Or it could be like a blues tune where you're going more from an improvised model. Mm -hmm. Some players tend to hit record and away they go. They might do a couple takes and they'll take parts or choruses that they feel like, oh, I like the third chorus better than the first take. Uh, some players will really woodshed ahead of time and, all right, this is the way this song gets played. Can you talk a little bit about some of those different modalities that you take on as an artist and how you approach improvising? Well, first, if it's a melody um, that, that you actually have to stick to, Amazing Grace, for example. Um, I play that song the first time, and I try to just play it so that everybody knows what, what it is. And it could be Amazing Grace, it could be whatever. But I play it the first time, and then I kind of build on that um, as I go. Um, and add little embellishments along the way. And that's where I kind of plan those out a little bit in advance because you know if you're playing the melody, if someone asks you to come play Amazing Grace at a wedding, which they do in funerals, uh, <laughs> that's uh, you know something that you do too with the harmonica. So if you know in advance, I try to work those out. But a lot of times um, with a, a blues solo, like, like you mentioned that, where it's just chords and they say, hey, take it and play. You know, yes, I'm improvising, but long, long way back, you know, I practiced with backing tracks and I found things that worked and I kind of developed this uh, bag of tricks or bag of licks, I guess you could say. And I have things that I know that will work over those chords. So I, improvising is, uh, it, it is improvising, but there's homework that, that goes ahead of it so that you know what you're doing. You can't just fly by the seat of your pants, so to speak. You kind of have to have an idea. And again, it goes back, for me, to uh, the chords. What notes are the juicy notes on the harmonica that will work o over these uh, chord changes? So I love the three-draw half-step bend. If it goes to the four, you know, you can get on the three-draw half-step bend and, uh, and play it and also, you know, just kind of growl, you know, so... And then when it goes to the four, you know, that's, that's a safe place um, to do that. But, you know, there's other things that I've worked out ahead of time. On the four chord, I like to go, if I'm playing a, a blues shuffle, um, so if we start, like, I'll just start from the beginning. So the four... So in that, I didn't use any five draw. I, I, I bounced off of the two blow. And there's the three draw half step in coming in. Five blow, four draw. So I know when the four chord comes around, even in country stuff, if I were playing a country tune. Four chord. That's just a, a safe uh, place. You don't want to play five draw over the four. Well, you can. You can. For it, building it, tension. And yes, yes. It's not. It's not that it's a bad note. It, it, but in country music, I try to to work around the major thirds there, the two blow, the five blow, um, and so yes, I, I, I improvise. And people tell me sometimes that they like my phrasing, but it's it's been worked out. It, right. You know, I'm, I don't know which one I'm going to pull out. My brain just. You know, just kind of works that way. If if if, if the uh, progression comes around, I just play whatever I feel. But it but somewhere back there in this library of, of licks, it's it's you know, I don't know how the brain works like that. But uh, I, I hope that answers your question. Sure. I, I you know, and then as far as like uh, if if I were going to build an instrumental thing like Sunday Soup, for example, that's uh, something on my CD. It's the first track, and it's. Um, it's an improvised thing or, or, a, or a little melody that, that I came up with. So like the first couple times, it sticks pretty true to a melody, and then it just goes, uh, you know, in a whole different direction. And there's a, a lot of influences in there, though, from Charlie and Buddy Green and Terry, and there's even a couple um, licks in there that I heard Howard Levy play, and I tried to, you know, work those in there. 
And so with that, it's just all over the place. Got if, it. If, but if, you worked on it. You had you tried to fit some ideas in there. Then you work on it enough so that by the time you go to the studio, you're, you're more in a flow state. Uh, a little bit of both. So I did work on it. But then you get in the studio, and then you may play something and think, oh, wow. What was that? Hey, can you can you run that back? Let me try that again. And so sometimes things just come out, uh, and like and you're like, where did that come from? Well, it it was put there some somehow somewhere way back there, but uh, some of it was planned out, and some of it just happened. So if you capture it, that's great. So sometimes you go back and listen to something that you improvised, and and you kind of chuckle, you know, like, at, at your own licks. And that, there's been many. T- Another thing too that that I wanted to say is that um, when I play. If I'm going to sit down and practice, a lot of times I'll take my phone uh, and just record. I'll just I'll just record and I'll play something. Especially if my brain's starting to like, if I if I have uh, found a lick that I like, like this third position major stuff, I'll record it. Because a lot of times I'll do stuff and I'm like, hey, where in the world did that come from? You know. So if you've captured it, you can go back and and learn licks from yourself. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever experienced oh, yeah, that. Oh yeah, all the time. But, but that's so. It, it, and one of the guy, one of the guys too, um, that that works with me on Skype. He um, records the Skype lessons, but he will um, go back and and if there's a lick that he likes, he'll 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 record it. He'll say, "Hey, play that again," and he'll just hold his phone ah. and record the lick. And he's built up a whole library of things. Sometimes he'll play them back for me and say, "What did you do here?" And I have to listen to it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me see. But but uh, capturing yourself, there's some great great things that had I not been recording. Myself, I probably would have forgotten it. You're like, hey, what did I do? And you go back, and, and then you can't find it. You've, have you experienced that oh, too? Yeah. yeah, I worked on an album. I, I'll <laughs> always have a recorder right next to me for that. Yeah, day. yeah. Always put your ideas down, and and I've got, uh, you know, folders full of files, and sometimes I'll go back through, you know, just for fun, listen to them. Hey, I forgot about that one, you know, uh-huh. and so. It's it's kind of weird the whole uh, improvising thing. It it's just kind of weird. You are improvising, but you've done you've done your homework ahead of time. Sure, yeah, you're a sum of all of your past practice experiences. Yeah, and so like well with Sunday soup even that's that's a good the reason I came up with that name the the music sounds churchy so Sunday as in you know the music that you hear on Sunday and soup as in uh, it's a mixture of of everything. It's like putting. A little bit of Charlie and Buddy, and a little bit of my own legs, and a little of this, and a little of that, and just stir it up, and, <laughs> you know. And then, you know, you take every spoonful is a little different, you know. So uh, that's that's how I came up with that. And uh, I like it. 